Episode is focused on one of the crown jewels in Philadelphia. When you think of the lineage of dance, when you think of a minority woman owned business, when you think of a boss, she has become really somebody that I look forward to talking to and getting her perspective on life, love, and the arts. I'm here today with one of my heroes, and, I, and they say she rose, but she is one of my heroes. Miss Joan Myers Brown. Welcome to the Did You Know Show. Hi, how are you? Glad to be here with you. I am glad to be here. I'm glad to be able to bring the show. The Did You Know is show is centered around connecting people to home, community, and business resources that you ordinarily wouldn't know about. But I want to connect people to the Philadelphia, the Philadelphia Dance Company. Tell us about it. When did it start? Well, back in 1970, 10 years after I had my dance school, I was teaching youngsters who had no jobs, nowhere to go. So I thought I would start something for them. You know, I'm one of those people when something needs to happen, try to make it happen. So I started a dance company to provide opportunities for black youngsters right here in Philadelphia. So they wouldn't have to leave the city to go somewhere else to do what they love to do. The energy, when I see, I'm a fan, I'm also blessed enough to be a board member. And, and when I see the energy with the dancers of all ages, it is something that, you, that, that engages you. It restores um, a, a, a sense of artistry. You guys do all kinds of pieces from jazz to ballet to tap. Um, what have you seen? What, what keeps you going? What keeps you motivated dealing with the dances over the years? I mean, you know, this is 2018. You said 1970, like, you know, that was yesterday. But does it feel like yesterday? Well, in 2020, I'll be celebrating 2020 with, I call it 50, 60, 50 years of Philadelphia and 60 years of my school. But what keeps wow. me going is some little four-year-old girl say, I can't wait to be in Philadelphia. Oh, wow. I just want to dance. So and I'm like, I gotta make sure I'm still around doing what I do so that girl can have an opportunity. And this past year, we tried to make sure that these ballet companies start hiring our black girls. They always hire a black man. So we're training our girls so that they're eligible for positions in these American ballet companies. They have to start looking like America. So there's always something to prove, something to do, make opportunities for our black kids. Now, we're in the summer of, of 2018, and you guys are on kind of a, a continuous tour. You tour all around the world, but, you know, you're going to, I guess, coming up in a couple of weeks, it's going to be this big thing that's going on in our Dell. Our previous episode was the Dell Music Fair. And so you guys every year put on a, an event, put on a show. I've been blessed enough to host it a few times. But this year, it's going to be a little different in that you're going to have the black orchestra. Tell us about it. Tell us about well, the Well, it's not band. really a black orchestra. The conductor is a black woman. And okay. she calls herself directing the Black Pearl Orchestra. And she uses musicians out of the Philadelphia Orchestra and other orchestras to compile a complete orchestra that she conducts. And uh, we're just happy that they're going to call it Cultural Night this year. Yes. Involve dance and music together. So one of the pieces, we're going to dance live music. Uh, the rest of the program, they do just music. And the rest of the program, we do just dance. So it should be uh, for us when it, by the time we get to this, it'll be over. <laughs> it have been a, an exciting evening, a very exciting evening. If you, you've been around, you know, obviously, you know, for 60 years, in, in that time frame, who have been some of the exciting companies or places that you've done? What are some of the exciting productions that you've done? You, you, well, we've been to over 20 countries in, in the world. Wow. And we've danced with uh, a lot of leading artists. Uh, I, sometimes I send the dancers without the company. Teddy Pendergrass, you know, the Manhattans, Patti LaBelle. We've danced with all of them. Uh, one of my choreographers now is the choreographer for uh, 
Beyonce and Mariah Carey. So, you know, I, we kind of intermix with the commercial field, but I'm really interested in the concert field for these girls because of longevity. Okay. And not just girls, boys too. We have eight girls and eight men in the company. I have a junior company. I have a D3, a youth company. Now this year I started a mini group. My <laughs> youngster's seven to 10 years old. Those girls and boys are killing it. So, you know, they're always talented youngsters, but we have to encourage them. But we have to encourage parents to support the kids when they're artistic. A lot of times they get taken away from the arts, especially now that they don't have the arts in the schools. Mm. People don't see the arts as lucrative. So I'm trying to make sure that there's opportunities for them. Wow. If you just tuned in, we're having a conversation today with Joe Myers Brown, visionary founder of Philodanko, the Philadelphia Dance Company. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back on the other side. We're going to talk more about how you can support the Philodanko. And as a parent or a mother or, or a community, uh, what are some of the community programs and outreach that we can do to support the dance school? Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Taking care of my mother is so hard. All my life, she gave me the best care she could. Now it's my turn. I have to find my mom the best care. At Always Best Care, our caregivers are matched to meet your needs. And we even give you access to on-call, round-the-clock physician support, along with your in-home care. If you need help with your mom or dad, call 1-302-409-3710 or visit alwaysbestcaredelaware.com. Always Best Care specializes in helping seniors who wish to remain in their home but need assistance. Our flexible care programs vary from hourly to live-in. Simply put, we're there when you need us. And Always Best Care is a DPW-approved Medicaid provider. Call today and we'll meet with you to develop a personalized care plan. Always Best Care Senior Services. Doing more, caring more, and dedicated to exceeding your expectations. Always. Did you know? Welcome back to the Did You Know Show. My name is Brian Green, and I'm sitting here today talking with my mentor, the, the, the boss, Joan Myers Brown. So the Philadelphia Dance Company is your passion, is your dream. It's, it's been around for 50, almost 50 years. But let's go back in time a little bit and talk about why did you start dancing? What, you know, your, your era was a lot different than this era. Well, you know, I, I uh, go three or four different eras. Uh, my mom sent me to dancing school because all the little black kids in the neighborhood went to Miss Essie Marie Dorsey School in the 30s. Okay. And uh, so I lost my shoes after the first week. My mom like, I don't have another dollar fifty cent. You can't go back. But when I was in high school, my my gym teacher, who had been a ballet dancer, told me that she thought I should dance and, and invited me to the ballet club. Well, at that time, the ballet club was all white in the 40s. Okay. And when I walked in, I was treated like, why are you here? And I'm like looking around like, why am I here? I can do this stuff. And fortunately, I could not get into any schools in Philadelphia. I walked up and down Walnut Street looking for a school that would take black youngsters, and I couldn't get a school to go to. Uh, so uh, one of my friends in the ballet club, she kind of taught me what she learned. And I did find that it was a black school. It was called the Judah Mar School, Sydney King School. And I, these two black women that had a school, and I went and to sign up for classes there. And then I found out I knew more than they knew because I had learned from the white girls. Okay. So uh, I started teaching for them. And then I, when I got 18, 19, uh, I got invited to a nightclub show by a girlfriend of mine who replaced Sister Sledge's mother. Oh, wow. <laughs> she, was leaving, she was pregnant. She was leaving. I said, Joan, you should get this job. So I started doing nightclub work, and I ended up doing nightclub work. I worked with Pearl Bailey, Sammy Davis, Billy Daniels, oh, Cab wow. Calloway. And then one day I woke up, and I'm like, 
this is not my life. This is not what I want to do, being in a nightclub, because it wasn't pleasant work. You used to have to mix. After you danced, you had to go sit at the bar. You had to be, you know, a host with the most. And I, it's not what I want to okay. do. So, and ballet was my love. And I said, maybe if I go back and teach some black youngsters, we're talking about 1960s, uh, then I can get, make way for somebody else. That's when I opened my school. Ten years later, opportunities for black youngsters still weren't happening. That's when I started the company. Okay. 1988, I started the International Association of Blacks in Dance, which is a national organization, which, by the way, just got a $4 million grant from Mellon. Oh, wow. Now, I didn't get it. Phyllis Anchor didn't get it, but my association got it. So, you know, I'm always, I say I have founder's disease. I'm always founding things. <laughs> but there's a need. In the arts, there's a need. And the arts are just becoming so that they're totally integrated. Modern dance is more integrated than anything else. Okay. The ballet companies are still the European picture, white America, but we had to change that. You do a wonderful, your company. Thank you. Your company does this wonderful piece that I've, I've bear witness to called Obama. And it's with young kids, and they do, it's a, it's a, the song itself is a remake to that, is it a chant that sings Gloria? No, 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 it's a Obama. Obama. Obama, and it, I, I don't, can't think of the, the guy that sings it, but the kids dance to that, yeah. And it was just wonderful, and, it, and, and, and while we know that this was built on, you know, the foundership of a black woman, it is definitely diverse and inclusive of all ethnicities. Exactly. Um, you are, this is a comfortable zone, and I endorse it because my daughter used to dance here years I ago. I remember, yes. And if we go further back into the 70s, one of my first babysitters also uh, danced here. But I, I want to ask a question, too, and we, we've talked about it before. I like the different productions over time, like Pearly Victorious and The Wiz. What are some of your favorites over the years that you've either participated in or choreographed or seen? Well, everybody loved The Wiz, the original Wiz, yes. with George Faison. Yes. And also, uh, one of my choreographers did the movie production of it. Lewis Johnson did the movie production of The Wiz. So that's my all-time favorite. But you know, my favorite thing that has nothing to do, well, it probably has to do with it. It's a film called Hurricane with Dorothy oh. Lamour, and she was doing a hula. <laughs> but I was always thrilled with that Hurricane movie. And that had nothing to do with dance. but. You know, life is about more than the dance for me. You know, okay. I have a life outside of dance. I have family, grandkids. I got a granddaughter I'm really proud of. So I, I can't pinpoint anything that really knocks me off. I'm proud of the many people like Lee Daniels, who was my student, okay. Leslie Odom, that aren't, aren't dancers now, but started here with me. So I can name a whole slew of people that make me proud. When I walk around the studio here in West Philadelphia, where we're at today, I seen a picture of you with, with then President Obama and his wife, Michelle. How was that meeting them? Well, you know, that, the company, by the way, was on the way to Chile. And I got the call that I had to be at the White House. I'm like, I can't. I got to go to Chile. They said, no, you have to be at the White House. You're getting an award. So when I canceled my sent the dancers on the Chile and I got to the White House, of course, I had to take my kids with me because they were more thrilled than I was. And we got an opportunity, and I was thinking that in my lifetime, I'll never see another black president. So I really was especially proud to be awarded the National Medal of Arts from him. For her contributions as a dancer, choreographer, and artistic director, founder of the Philadelphia Dance Company, Miss Brown carved out an artistic haven for African-American dancers and choreographers to innovate, create, and share their unique visions with the national and global dance communities. I, I cried all the way to Chile. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it was, you know, she was gracious, and he is handsome. OK. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we still say he has swag. <laughs> He's got swag. Yeah. Got class. You got yeah, class. You yeah. got a class to act. So you've met a lot of people over the years. You've been, you know, you, 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 like you just said, you, you've been involved with a lot of people's beginnings or, you know, humble beginnings in a lot of ways. You know, what do you see the future of dance? You know, the future of the art, since it's now not in schools, how important is it for this type of school to exist? 
Well, you know, it's an after-school activity anymore. It's not something, there are a few performing arts schools now, and uh, I'm being involved with the String Theory, which is a performing arts school that offers uh, excellent training in school hours. And I think that if more of these charter schools open up for the arts, since the public schools aren't given, I think the String Theory has a 5,000 waiting list for kids that want to be involved in the arts. They want to do these things. Our children are born dancers. Mm. They dance when they come out of the womb, they jump around. So <laughs> if we don't give them opportunities to not only be dancers, but to be musicians and singers and artists, that they don't have that creative outlet, they can't stay glued to an iPod and a cell phone all day. We've got to make opportunities for them. And you know, I have two dance schools. I keep them going, four dance companies. And as long as I can, I want to make these opportunities for our kids. Wow. Well, we're going to take another quick break. The Did You Know show, if you didn't know, is also aired on WURD Radio on Saturdays at 4 p.m. at 900 a.m. and 96.1 FM. We're going to take a quick break, and we're going to come back and conclude our conversation with the one and the only Joan Myers Brown. I, she said I could call her JB. <laughs> Stay tuned. Did you know? Always Best Care specializes in helping seniors who wish to remain in their home, but need assistance. Our flexible care programs vary from hourly to live-in. Simply put, we're there when you need us. And Always Best Care is a DPW-approved Medicaid provider. Call today and we'll meet with you to develop a personalized care plan. Always Best Care Senior Services. Doing more, caring more, and dedicated to exceeding your expectations. Always. Taking care of my mother is so hard. All my life, she gave me the best care she could. Now it's my turn. I have to find my mom the best care. At Always Best Care, our caregivers are matched to meet your needs. And we even give you access to on-call, round-the-clock physician support, along with your in-home care. If you need help with your mom or dad, call 1-302-409-3710 or visit alwaysbestcaredelaware.com. Did you know? show. My name is Brian Green. I'm sitting here with JB, Joan Myers Brown. And we were talking, we're here in West Philadelphia, but you have two schools. Can you tell us about this? Yeah, I have another school in Washington Lane in Ogons. That section is called West Oak Lane, but it's Germantown. Okay. And also uh, right across the river, across the river, across the street, Sheltonham Avenue is Jenkintown, Elkins Park. So I'm in a very nice location up there, but the two schools are, again, over 60 years old. So... And so, so when did the schools open back up? When, how, do, how, do, how, do, how do parents enroll their kids? What is the cost? And then do you offer scholarships? Could you give us? Well, we give a lot of scholarships. Phyllis Dankler also gives a lot of scholarships for its program, as well as our school. Our parents club work very hard to give scholarships. Uh, we start again in September. We close uh, over the summer. But we do have a summer program, but that's by audition. But the school itself takes all kids, both schools. So we start in September, probably September the 6th. Okay. So uh, you can look on philodanko.org and pull up the dance school, get that information. Classes, we try to keep the classes reasonable. They're $15 for a dance class, one hour or hour and a half. And then we also give a student card. So we get 10 classes for a sizable discount. But, uh, you know, we teach everything from ballet, tap, jazz, hip hop, but we do not do competitions. Okay. Uh, competitions we don't do, we do training. Okay. Uh, people who want their kids just to show up and run around the country and spend a lot of money for competitions, I'm sorry, we don't do that. But if you're interested in training and opportunities for dancers, we do that. Both with Philodanko and our school, it's called the Philadelphia School of Dance Arts. Okay. That was before Philodanko, that's the mother company of Philodanko. Okay, so how, tell us about that. Tell us the origin of that. Well, I started the dance school, as I said, when I stopped dancing. And once the school turned out good dancers with nothing to do, I had to do something with them. And then later on, I found out what I was doing 
it was difficult to fundraise and find the opportunities for performances, to find, find teachers, to find dancers. I started an organization called the International Association of Blacks in Dance, which is 32 years old. So there are lots of opportunities with us. Uh, we have over seven to 800 people come to Philadelphia in 2020 for a conference. Oh, wow. And I've already booked the hotel, the studios, the theaters and all. And we bring over 600 people. This is, uh, we just came out of California. Okay. So I'm just busy with dance. And so what is your relationship, what is the school's relationship with, with different amphitheaters like the, the Kimmel? We are the resident, thank you, we are the resident <laughs> dance company of the Kimmel Center. We've been there 16 years. Being the resident company means that we have access to the theater twice a year. Okay. Where they assist us with marketing and promotion and, and make sure that we have an opportunity to perform with the company. And it, it sort of validates for the city, even though the city isn't always kind to us with funding. I have to say that we have to rely upon our friends and family to support us and our board members <laughs> who make sure that we have the money to keep the company going, to keep these youngsters. We're one of the few companies in the country that pay their dancers 52 weeks of the year. Okay. I think if plumbers get paid every week, my dancers should be paid every week and get a vacation too. Right on. And so how can people, you know, you are a father, the school, I say you, you are the school. How can people get involved? How can people get involved to support the school? Well, it's not the school. People, the company is a 501c3 C company. Okay. You can support the company by making contributions. Again, on the Philadelphia website, they can take con that's tax deductible. But we do have people who support the kids in the school and make sure they have scholarships. It's your choice. The scholarships in the school are not tax deductible. So we tell people to contribute through Philadelphia. Okay. And then if they stay designated for classes, we can shift the kids. Now, you mentioned that you have several different classes, tap, ballet, day, modern. Um, and so do kids have to, you mentioned in the summertime they have to audition, but if they just want to sign up in the fall, they don't have to audition. How, how, what's, that, what's that process like? Well, in the summer, they, I want the kids go to camp, they go to grandma's, they go all over other places, but there are kids who are committed to dance. Okay. And so we have a, what we call an intensive where we just give training, and they have to audition, they have to be serious about dance. I'm not babysitting. Okay. You know, and so they come after camp, after school, whatever, in the evening and take classes. That, again, was the, the one that we have to have auditions for. Now, the dance school, anyone can sign up. And we once they get here, we can know where to put them from beginner's classes up. Okay. Ballet, tap, jazz, hip-hop, acrobats. We have to teach it all. Lots of boys' classes. We give a lot of free classes to boys because my daddy said you shouldn't dance. But we want to show that boys can dance, too. And so you, you guys don't do competition, but you absolutely do do ballet recitals. We do recitals, we do showcases, we do performances, we perform more senior citizens' homes, schools, oh, after wow. schools, we do a lot with dance. Wow, and, and, and what would you say to somebody that's starting out that's really serious about dance? What advice would you give a female or a male that is really interested in dance and, and, and really want to build the artistry and have, that's serious about the training? Well, I say, first of all, you have to find a school with a good teacher, okay. someone who's serious about their teaching. Also, most of the times, if the school has a company aligned with it, okay. there are several schools I could recommend that have good companies, and so I'm sure they're teaching well, not someone who's looking to make a buck. Okay. You know, and I think a lot of the schools, and i you know, not talking about anyone in particular, but a lot of schools are rather have 30 kids in the class than five that really want to dance. Mm. Joan Myers Brown of Philodenko. What else, as, as we kind of wind down the show, I want to just give you an opportunity to give the phone number, give the website again, and then just tell us what you want us to know. <laughs> well, we're at philodenko.org. Okay. Uh, the phone number here is 215-387-8200. Someone from the company is here from 9 in the morning to 12 at night. Our school operates after school hours from okay. 4 o'clock till about 9 or 10. We're here seven days a week, believe it or not. If we're not teaching dancing, we're rehearsing. The company is, is performing. We just had a wonderful season in New York and in, oh, wow. and in Massachusetts and in, at the Dell. So we're busy, busy, busy. Uh, we, I think we've been to just about every state except uh, Arkansas. Oh, wow. <laughs> and maybe, and New Mexico. Those two we haven't been to, but 
Alaska, Canada. And you, mentioned, you made mention softly, and we've talked a lot about the dancers, male and female. You said, are you looking for dance instructors still, or always, or is that? Well, most of the time, the dance company members now are teachers. I have 30 companies, teachers. Uh, Members, I have 30 teachers that are company <laughs> members, okay. and uh, also the former teachers uh, with my school are still with me, and we're just busy teaching dance, but if people are interested, be sure to call us. I, if they don't like my school, I can recommend another one. Well, right on, but you definitely want to come to the Philip Danko. Yes. Joe Myers Brown, thank you for coming on our show. Thank you for having us here at 9 North Preston Street in West Philadelphia. It's called Philip Danko Way. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Philip Danko Way. Yes. Thank you for coming on the show, um, and we look forward to all of the good events that's coming up in the future. Thank you again for coming on the show. I thank you for the opportunity. All right. Well, that's our show for today. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. This is Brian Green signing off from the Did You Know Show. Did you know he'll help you understand? Did you know always a right-hand way? Did you know he's going to make it clear? Did you know? Come on, listen here. Did you know? Did you know?